Hello everyone, I am Abhinav Tyagi and today I will show you how to set up your Raspberry Pi 3 for developing prototypes on Android things. As you all know, Google has recently introduced a new OS Android things for uh, Internet of Things. This is still under preview mode at the time of this recording. So if you are looking at this video lately, things may have evolved. So to begin with, uh, you open this URL developer.android.com slash things and uh, click on hardware. So if you are new to electronics and want to have a basic overview, uh, you click on hardware 101. Uh, here you will get a basic overview of what a breadboard is, uh, what are different power supplies, uh, what are different IO pins, analog and digital, what are different uh, voltage that are supplied to the circuits, what are pull up and pull down circuits, what is a debound circuit, how you can protect your IO pins. Uh, this is especially important for uh, uh, Raspberry Pi 3 which we will be using for prototyping and uh, on uh, moving on to developer kits uh, you can see what are the different hardware that are supported currently for Android things uh, these are different prototype boards that we can use we have one from Intel Edison Intel Jude NXP and Raspberry Pi 3 is there so since we are using Raspberry Pi 3, we'll move to Raspberry Pi 3 page and uh, first of all we'll flash our image onto an SD card. So for that we'll get the latest preview image. Uh, you can see different uh, preview images have been listed down here. We'll download this one for Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, I have already downloaded it, so we'll move back. Oh, sorry, and then uh, this zip file will will need to unzip it, and uh, you can see there is a note. So uh, this uh, uncompressed image uh, it's over 4 GB. So the default unzipper that is there in Windows and uh, on Mac, uh, we we face some trouble uh, unzipping this zip so for windows you can download 7-zip and for, if you are using mac os like i am using you can download the unarchiver i have already downloaded it so i'll right now move to unzip my image here's my image i'll right click on it open with the unarchiver so once this is unarchived uh, we will use it to flash our SD card which we will use in our Raspberry Pi 3 so once done will open terminal move to PO. downloads will identify the different disks that have been mounted here on my machine so you can see uh, I have my hard disk here which has been named as disk 0 I have my SD card plugged in uh, which is named as disk 2 so I will first unmount it now I will copy my Raspberry Pi image for Android things onto this disk So it will take some time to mount the image. 
so once we have burned our android things image on the sd card we'll prepare our android studio for that we'll go back to our website we'll open this uh, github repository from android things and uh, download this new project template so this is a template that is provided by android things team and uh, i have already downloaded it here i'll create a duplicate of it i'll rename it as hello things I'll open Android Studio. Open existing Android Studio project. make sure your developer preview version 0.4 is coming here i'll update this gradle file So once the project is completely built, uh, we'll open our Java code. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have main activity. This is similar to what we see on an Android project. So I'll just copy paste the hello world project here. So uh, for electronics, uh, hello world is like a blinking of LED. So what I'm doing here is I have created an interval of one second. I have used a pin BCM13 that is the name given by Android things for the physical pin number 33 on Raspberry Pi 3. So this is the GPIO pin 13 on Raspberry Pi 3 which has been named as BCM13 on Android things and physical pin is 33 this is the physical pin on the Raspberry Pi uh, I have created a handler like Android we should not perform any IO task on UI thread so for that we have created a handler here uh, we will create a LED output pin which I have named as MLED GPIO using the peripheral manager service uh, I have opened this GPIO pin GPIO pin name that is BCM13 I have given the direction here as direction out that means it is an output pin and initially low means its output voltage initially would be 0 volt and uh, uh, and using the handler I'm just creating this M blink runnable that is here and uh, what it is doing is if it's if the output pin value is 1 it will set it to 0 if it is 0 it will set it to 1 with a time delay of 1 second so first of all uh, let me set up the Raspberry Pi 3 as you can see uh, I have connected my Raspberry Pi 3 with a breadboard uh, I have my LAN cable attached so when you r first run the Raspberry Pi 3 you will have to connect your LAN cable you can configure it for a Wi-Fi 
but uh, for initial boot you need to connect your LAN cable and uh, I have extended my GPIO pins to the breadboard using this uh, extension my extension has an inbuilt LED on port on pin number 13 so uh, so now I'll open my terminal I'll type adb connect either I can put the IP address of Raspberry Pi 3 or I'll type android dot local so it shows connected to android dot local 5555 so this is the port number and you can see it's similar to what we get for an emulator on android apps so now I'll just hit this build button build and run unknown IOT RPI 3 so uh, this is the Raspberry Pi 3 that has been detected I'll click OK and uh, as soon as the project gets built and deployed the APK gets deployed you will see the onboard LED light blinking so I have also connected an external LED device uh, LED here so uh, it's connected to the ground pin and the positive pin of the LED has been connected to a 470 ohm register and I have kept this pin open right now uh, I'll show you once the onboard pin starts blinking so it is, it's installing APK right now and launching activity and now you can see the onboard LED blinking I will connect this external pin here see our LED is blinking so this was the Android Things project on Raspberry Pi 3 uh, stay tuned for more updates thank you